Amen. Awesome. Give it up for the band. All right. Give it up for our tech team. Um, I know that a, a few of you come up, came up and said, I'd like to be a part of the van. The, ban the van. The van. Let's get a van. Um, but I'd like to be a part of the, the, the band. I can't say it. The band. Um, and if you haven't heard anything, it's my fault, okay? It's my fault. So uh, come to me. We'll get you plugged in. Ben's right there. He'll get you plugged in. He'll, he'll introduce you to Stephanie, who leads our, our, our band, Stephanie Ferno, which does a great job. Um, and uh, Ben leads it as well. And d doesn't Ben do a great job? Give himself a round of applause. <laughs> You might be thinking, my, that is a very, very old-looking middle schooler. Or you might be thinking, my, that adult looks very young for his age. That's because he's neither. <laughs> he's a high schooler, um, and he loves you guys, and he came down here, and he's a great leader. So we're glad to have him. Um, we really couldn't do without him. And give it up for those singers that we had. That was awesome, and everybody else. Um, so if you'd like to be a part of our tech team and our band, just let me know, and we'll get you plugged away. Uh, we got a, a few different things that you can serve in. Um, obviously, the stuff that you just saw uh, right here, um, but uh, we're also going to be starting different things um, in the future, and I'll get to that when we actually have it uh, squared away. Um, but there's also puppet ministry. If you were ever in the children's ministry, or if you've ever gone to Harvest Hoopla, or Har Harvest Fest, or uh, uh, whatever it's called, um, you see the puppets doing different things and they do different things throughout there. They practice, um, and they do uh, a lot of different puppet stuff. So that's going to be starting up. No, it really wasn't a thing much um, when we were in quarantine and all that, but they want to start be something back up, but give them some time because, you know, it's hard to do, like, COVID, COVID protocol when you're doing puppets. So they, they we're working something out with that, all right? So uh, just uh, let me know anything like that you want to serve, um, and uh, we, we can get you plugged in. Uh, greeter team on Sunday mornings, like, come on out. We'd love to get you plugged in with that. Uh, guys, you are the church. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you know him as your Lord and Savior, you are uh, a part of the body of Christ. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But you are old enough. You are the church. You can be a part. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. And in our message today, we're going to be uh, uh, going over uh, our message of, of DNA, who, who we are and what we are supposed to do. Who are we as, as Cross Life students? What is, what is our DNA? What, what makes up our, like, our like, core? What, what is it all about? And that's what we're going to be going over today. So um, for those who don't know me, um, I am like, as you can tell, um, <laughs> everybody's a comedian, uh, but not everybody's funny, you know what I'm saying? Um, but here's the thing, um, uh, as you can tell, as you can see, I am the specimen of athleticism. Uh, I, I am like, you know, like, look at that, like, um, Hunter, like, Hunter was, Hunter came up to me the other day, and he's like, how'd you, how'd you get so strong? And I was like, <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyways, um, I, I played football, and that, that was probably, I played a lot of different sports. I played a lot of different sports, but, uh, football was probably, um, my favorite to play because, I, like, it was basically me, like, doing this and hitting people, right? So, like, I didn't have to, like, do a lot, you know? Like, I get to put pads on and hit people, you know? Like, it was awesome. So, I, I, I started playing when I was li uh, a little bit younger. I was, like, eight, I think, when I started playing football and uh, enjoyed it. And I got a call, like, I think it was, like, a call, or my, my coach came up to me, and he's like, hey, uh, I want you to be the center. I was like, okay, what's that? Uh, and so, and for the, who knows football? Who, who here knows football? Who here is like, uh, soccer is the real football because <laughs> soccer is football for the rest of the world, okay? All right. For shame. Um, anyways. Um, but anyways, shh, 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 shh. Um, so he's like, hey, you're going to be the center. And basically the center, if you know anything about football, there's the, the big fat men on the, on the line. <laughs> and, the, and the fattest guy... 
the fattest guy is holding the ball and he's going, huh, and he's just like hitting people, like he's just going, huh, and looking for someone to hit, right? So uh, you're going to you're gonna be the center. And I was like, all oh, right, that's so cool. I found out later, like that the next practice, I, I, he chose me to be a center, not because like I was good, but I was the fattest on the team. So um, he's like, mm, fat guy, be center. Uh, and I was like, mm, OK. <laughs> um, but the coolest thing about center was not the fact that I got to play or hike the ball. That was really cool. Um, not like as like the only lineman to touch the ball. <laughs> um, but I got to yell huddle. Um, and I have a loud voice, OK? And my, my loud voice gets me in trouble N eight times out of ten, nine times out of ten, like I'm just talking normal, and they're like, would you please stop talking so loud, right? Um, but here's the thing. Uh, I have a really loud voice, and the, the greatest thing about being center is that I get to call the huddle. And the huddle is basically after the play happens, and they like, are like, Woo! <laughs> tackle. Um, they are like, okay, the play's dead. And then everybody huddles up. Well, how do you know it's going to huddle? Because you got the big fat kid in the middle going, huddle! And like, that's what I got to do. And I got to do that a thousand times during the game. And it was awesome, right? And the huddle was like a meeting time where it was a lot of purpose. And it was like, it was, it was a great time because like we just got done and whether we did a good job or whether um, they, they blamed the linemen for everything, uh, we got to um, huddle up, understand what's happening, and then we could go out and we could do the next play. And I got to do that, like, I was a, I was a, a center all the way, like, up through uh, until I was in high school, and then I became a guard. Now, come high school, like, I was m more of the smaller person on the team. I know that's really surprising to happen. Like, a lineman, I was, like, pretty small on the team. And we were playing one our, my junior year. I was, uh, I don't take questions, but I'll take yours. Oh, are you, uh, okay. So, um, anyways, <laughs> look, look at me. Um, so I'm on my senior, on my, senior year, my junior year, right? I'm not I'm not a starter. Um, I'm not a starter, um, and uh, I'm and it's our rival game. It's the most important game of of the year. Uh, it's called the Jug Bowl, like the jug or the Jug game, and like no lie, there was this like old like think backwoods like hillbilly jug like and we would pass this jug back and forth to the schools and we would carve our like little eat into the into the jug y'all i'm like redneck school city right like we had tractor day where everyone drove their tractors to school like that's the tr school i went to right so we're we're there and i'm like standing on the sidelines and like usually i kind of want to play and like i'm just i'm just so happy i'm not playing <laughs> i'm like i'm so happy i'm not out there because our like rivals like there was something in the water that made them like goliaths and they were like poof, 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 eat you and then like and then, and then they would eat you and then they would like you would like go away right and like and so uh there was a guy on the line he was the by far the biggest the baddest the toughest the meanest on the field guy on our football team he was huge he was like muscle like muscle 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 pop, pop, pop. <laughs> um off the field nicest guy on the field terrified like uh, so happy he was on my team right he gets hurt by another guy that's how big they are right and like i'm like oh he's hurt <laughs> and then i hear like the worst like thing i could hear and like there and my coach goes tommy i'm like oh, what Get out there. I was like, I got to finish my orange. Um, <laughs> and so, like, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, like, it's, like, a bigger position that I've never even practiced for. So I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, show no fear, show no fear. And that, that was basically my whole sports career. Show no fear, show no fear. <laughs> and so my face is like, <laughs> but in my mind, I was going, <laughs> 
And so we get into our huddle, right? And our huddle is where we get our game plan, our, our focus, what we got, we got going on. And everyone's looking at me, and I'm like, and like everybody's like there, and they're like all, like, they have no confidence in me, which is a great confidence booster for me. Like, it's like, great, they know I'm going to fail. <laughs> um, and so uh, they looked at me, and they, they looked at me like, Tommy, are you ready? Like, are you ready to go? Like, are you, like, are you ready to do this? And like, like, in my mind and in my heart, I was like, let's go. Like, you know, I was like pumped and I was like, let's go. It didn't come out that way. It kind of came out like this. <laughs> And, uh, like, I, that's literally, I was like, ah! Uh, this high-pitched screaming squeal. And, and like, I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm never living that down. And I never did. And, um, and so uh, we went into there. I don't remember a lot from that other than me just screaming and going, <laughs> all right. And then looking up and going, you're so big. And then, like, getting pummeled into the ground. <laughs> Uh, needless to say, we lost that game badly. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just as a huddle, just as a huddle is a time to gather, a time to meet, a, t a serious moment, a serious time for a team. Because you need to understand what's going to happen. It is necessary for that team to get together at least a few downs or what's ever happening so that they can understand what to do next. They understand what their purpose is for the next play. They understand what their purpose is down the road. The church and their gathering of the church does somewhat of the same thing. So what is the student ministry? The student ministry, this student ministry is a part of the church. This student ministry is a small portion of what Cross Life Church is to the community. You are a part of the church. Now, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you, you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you realize that he died on a cross for you so that you could have a relationship with him and he rose again so that you could believe in him and you wouldn't have to die, but you could be with him forever. You are a part of the church. If you're not... If you're not and, you're, and you haven't accepted him, that's, that, that's okay. I hope that you do one day. But here's the thing. You are enjoying what Jesus did with his people. You're not really a part, but you, you, you're like, you're like the, the, the friend that comes over and people are like, hey, what's up? Let's come on over. And like you could become part of the family, but you just haven't yet. So you are a part of the church. But what is the church? The church is the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Romans uh, six, chapter 6, ch uh, chapter 16, verses 17 expresses that you are a body of Christ, meaning that you are together. You are together. You're connected with one another through Christ. That you are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 expresses that believers in Christ are the temple of God because they have the Holy Spirit within them. The Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. God is dwelling within you, making you a temple of the Lord. The church is the bride of Christ, married to God, married to Christ, meaning that you are bounded together because of what Christ did for you. And all three of those things, when it's expressing what the, uh, what the church is, is things that shouldn't be done separated. A body is better when you have, like, all arms, legs, feet, hands, um, like, head together. A body doesn't work when the head's not there, right? Like, <laughs> dead, you know, like... Um, the body is together. The temple is better when it, the, when the, like a brick and mortar building is better when those bricks are together. A husband and wife are stronger when they're together. You see, because of this, we have to meet. We need to meet. We need to understand why to meet. And I'm not talking about just going to a Christian school. That's great if you do. 
but you don't go there to solely worship God. You go there to learn math and reading and writing and all that, which is good, but you need a time where you can come together and you can worship Jesus together. In our story, we start in Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there now. Um, but I'm going to kind of go over an overview, and this is, this is what I want you to do. If it, like, homework, okay? If you want to have some homework, and you're like, this church, how dare you give me homework? Um, deal with it, okay? Um, I, I don't know what to say. Um, read Acts chapter 2, all right? The whole thing, it's awesome. It's really cool. You get to see, full, see the full picture, and I, basically, I'm just giving you like, um, and you can go, all right? So here's the thing. This is, such a cool, this is such a cool chapter because we get to see the first church, the church, um, the first church that happens after Christ is uh, buried, after Christ has died on the cross, after he rose again, and as he, as he was ascended into heaven. We get to see the church happening. We get to see a count of real historical facts of what the church is happening. And what's happening is that people are coming to know God. And because they are coming to know God, the Holy Spirit is coming upon them and there's signs that the Holy Spirit is with them. The Holy Spirit who is also God, he's, he's with them. And because he's with them, they start to act different. They're speaking in different languages because it's a huge sign that something's happening and other people are around them going, what in the world is up with those crazy people? What is going on? And like they're talking in different language, and they're like, woohoo! And they're like, hey, how are you doing? And they're li- and like, some people are like, some people are like, man, whatever's happening with that, that's awesome. They're ha- they're having a great time. Maybe maybe something's happening. And other people are like, no, they are drunk. <laughs> they are like not not like coherent at all. Right. And so Peter, Peter, one of uh, uh, that that Jesus said, "I will build your build my church upon you. Um, that I will use you to build my church." Peter l- f- heard them talking, and he gives a message. <sighs> Purified water, fantastic for the hydration of <laughs> mouth, neck, and th- throat. Buy some purified water. Uh, all right. Focus. All right. Uh, uh, that, that message was brought to you by purified water. Uh, now we're getting back into our message. All right. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. They say, wow, what is happening? What is happening? And Peter looks at them. Peter starts preaching to them. Peter starts talking to them. And he says, do you remember Jesus Christ? The ones that you crucified. The ones that you crucified. Now, there might be people in there, and he might be talking about those who, who have maybe sinned, and because of their sins, Jesus was crucified. And he's also, remember, this, is, this, a few, this isn't like very long after Jesus ascended. This isn't very long after Jesus was crucified. He's probably talking to a lot of people who actually crucified Jesus. They were the ones saying, no, give us Barabbas. Take him to the cross. Kill him. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. They were the ones in that crowd. And he's saying this, remember that, remember that Jesus, the one that you crucified? Well, he died and he rose again. Not for just these people, but for you. Not for just these people, for, for you. And he, and he talks about how, how Jesus walked the earth and he walked a blameless life and that he is the son of God and that he died for you so that you could know God. And those people are like, a lot of those people said, brothers, what shall we do? In chapter, uh, chapter 2 of Acts, at the end of verse 37. In verse 38, it says this. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's the cool thing about the church. Here's the cool thing about the church. 
The church was started, formed with the very same people that crucified him. The church was started and formed, and, and people started to grow by the very same people who were right there. They saw him, and they pointed, and they said, you crucify him. And when they asked, what should we do? Peter tells them to repent, be baptized. You see, none of us were actually there um, if you were, you'd be like so old, like you'd be ancient. You probably wouldn't be coherent. You'd probably be like, where's my banana? You know, like, mm, like, oh, oh, tell us about like the ancient biblical times. And you, you'd be like, bah! right? Because you'd be so old. Um, some of us probably, you, so you weren't there, but guess what? The Bible expresses that he died for you, meaning that because of our sins, because of our sins, we put him on the cross. Because of our sins, we put him on the cross. You see, God knew you before you were born. He knew who you were when he was on that cross. He knows your worst. He knows the, the pain, the torture that you're going through. He knows what you're doing for pain, and the, the pain and torture in your own life. He knows the bad circumstances that you might are, be in, and he knows all, and he died because he loves you, and he rose again because he's a living God so that we could be with him. And it's very simple. We repent. We follow it. Then, and, and, and the Holy Spirit comes, on, comes upon us, and we are baptized. We follow him. We show that the world that we are believers. And this is what happens. This is what they started to do. In chapter uh, uh, 2, verses... Um, uh, 20, uh, 42. And these same people and the groups that they, he was just talking about, the people who accepted Christ, they said, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. And they started going to different things. In verse 45, it talks about that they were um, uh, going uh, to, 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 like, each other's houses. And they, these verses, are, they were going to each other's houses. They were having Bible studies. They were going to the temple. They were worshiping God there because they didn't build, like, like here's the church, here's the temple. Open the doors and see all the people. They didn't build any of that. They would have the temple, right? So they were going to the temple. They were formally worshiping. They were, were like, fellowshipping every day with each other. They were together. They were together. They were giving to the homeless. They weren't thinking of themselves for a change, but they were thinking of others. It says this in verse 45, 46, sorry. In 47, it talks about that God added to their numbers daily. We are a church, we are a student body where we want to meet and we want to worship Jesus. Who are we? What's the student ministry about? We are here to glorify God. We want to talk about Jesus. We want to pray to Jesus. We want to have fun in Jesus' name. We want to lift people up. We want to grow in our lives closer to Jesus. We want to love people because Jesus loved us. We are a group wanting to be focused and have our identity in Jesus. But we just don't meet just to meet. This isn't a country club. 
This isn't like, okay, I'm a member, I paid my dues, now I get to chill out, and I get to eat like the cool snacks, and I get to go to the, the, the trips, and I, like, I, I get to go to camp, and we get to have some fun, and it's a great group, and it's like a club at school, right? And it's so much fun, or maybe you don't like it, and you're like, oh, my parents make me come here, or what, whatever it might be. We are not a group that just meets to meet. We are a group that meets so that we can go out and we could fill a mission. And next week we're going to get into that. We're going to get into what we need to be doing as believers. And we're going to get into uh, what exactly are all these locks on the stage. Maybe we're going to refocus on what they are and, and keep on going. We are a, a group, a believing group professing group that loves Jesus and wants to see Jesus glorified in all that we do. So as the band comes up and we get ready to close, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. And this is the question. You ready? You ready? Are you a part of the church? You don't have to you don't have to say anything out loud, but like are you a part of the church? I'm not talking about your parents. I'm not talking about asking you if you're if you're a part of the church. I'm not I'm not even asking if, if you come here every every Wednesday or every Sunday. I'm not asking if you've been in church your whole life. I'm not asking if this is maybe your first time in a church building. Um, that's, that's not what I mean by when I ask, are you a part of the church? What I'm asking is, are you a part of the body of Christ? Do you know God? Do you know God on a personal level? school now maybe it's been your first week first couple weeks of middle school and it's been tough maybe it's been it's been awesome maybe you're in eighth grade and it's just the same old same old and you've been doing this for two and a half years and you're just kind of like in the routine whatever it might be but guess what the faith that you have is not your parents the faith that you have is not your friends the faith that you have needs to be yours to be yours. And just like those people ask, what do I do? What do we do? What do you do now that you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? What do you do now that you know that Jesus lived a perfect life and rose again so that you could be with him? What do you do now that you know that you can accept the Holy Spirit as your, as your Savior, you can accept God as your Savior, and you can live a life with Him for eternity, that you can go to heaven and worship Him for eternity? What do you do now that you know that? You repent, or you don't. It's very simple. Where is your heart? Where are you? I'm sure that there's people in here that don't know God, just like, I'm, and I'm glad, I'm so glad that you're here. You belong here. This is, this is our, your spot. But let me tell you, we want you to be a part of our family. How do you do that? You repent of your sins, meaning you ask forgiveness of your sins, you turn away from your sins, and you confess them to God, and you ask God to be your Lord and Savior. already done that. You've already done that. You've accepted Christ. You've done all that. You know that you're a Christian. You've got that. You've got that solid. But yet, they, like, the people looking at you, they want to go, wow, what's different with that person? 
is that person like? What's what's that person's what, what's that person's problem? Why are they so kind? Why are they so loving? Why do they go to church all the time? Like, what's their deal? Some of you aren't there because they want to tell the difference. Because you're really not living your life for Christ. You're living your life for you. You're living your life for your friends. What do you do? You repent. You repent and you run to God. So I'm going to pray. And if you need to do that, you can come right up to the front of the stage. And you can pray to God. You can kneel down right here and pray to God. I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for who you, what you're doing here. And Lord, I thank you that you saved me. You came into my life and you showed me that I was a sinner and that I needed you. And Lord, I just pray for that person in here that doesn't know you. I pray that tonight they can come to know you. I pray that you'd be working in their hearts this week. Lord, I just pray that there'd be someone here that realizes that they need to live for you to follow you, God. And Lord, thank you so much for this time that we have. Protect us as we